Before we start this video, a large thank you to Andrew Ridgway, Simon C, Lurking Shadows, Ildegel, Kevin Smith, and Everardo Costaneda. I really appreciate your support, guys, and I hope you enjoy the video. Hello, everybody. Okay, in this video, we're going to make an ambush slash sleeping state for our enemy. So when we pop in and go in front of them, they'll wake up and try to attack us. So I'm just going to make a script here called Ambush State. And I'm going to wait for that to load up here. I'm going to up the size on the screen so you guys can see it. Delete the start and update method. And I'm going to call it from state. It's going to inherit from state, rather, which means we'll have to put it in our namespace, which I have not done. Uh, if you hear creaking, by the way, it's because I am at my family's house for Christmas holidays. And this chair is the most atrocious thing I've ever sat in my life. So don't mind that. Now I'm going to import or uh, implement, sorry, this uh, public override state tick. And this is going to work like the other states we've created. So let's start by saying public bull is sleeping. Um, that will obviously tell us if the enemy is asleep or awake. And then we're going to say public float detection radius. That will be the radius in which the enemy can uh, detect us and wake up and then attack us. In the future, we'll also hook this up to things like trap chest, or if you pick up an item that'll wake them up, etc., etc. Uh, let's also make a layer mask and call it detection layer. Okay, now down here in the... Oh, actually, uh, we need to make two other things too. First, we need to make a public pursue target state and call that pursue target state. Excellent. Okay. Now let's make a public string and call it sleep animation. Now we're going to say if is sleeping and and enemy manager dot is interacting. Oh, I guess I don't have that. We'll use uh, is performing action. Although I think we have to change that. But anyway, uh, if performing action is false and you are sleeping, then we're going to say enemy animator manager play target animation, sleep animation is interacting equals true. Okay, now I'm going to make a region here and call this handle target detection. And, and region, and it's going to behave pretty much the same way we would handle it on the idle state. So we're just going to say collider, an array of colliders, equals physics dot sphere cast overlap sphere sorry uh, on our enemy manager transform position and we're going to give it a radius of the um, detection radius and we're going to fire that on the detection layer only so for you guys know what that does it just basically fires out an invisible circle uh, around the enemy and if it detects anything on the detection layer that is our player uh, within that radius then it will give us back that collider so we're going to say for every collider that it detects we're gonna look for a uh, player manager variable. I think that's what we used in the detection before. If not, then I'll change it. It's either player manager or uh, character stats. So we're gonna say player manager equals colliders i dot get com transform dot get component player manager. So it's gonna search all the colliders that it finds for a player manager variable. And if it finds it, then we're going to do some logic. So we're going to say if player manager does not equal null, so if the collider that you've detected does have a player manager, meaning it is the player, then we're going to say vector3 targets direction is equal to player manager dot transform dot position minus enemy manager dot transform dot position. Then we're going to say enemy manager dot viewable angle is equal to vector three dot angle targets direction enemy manager dot transform dot forward. If enemy manager dot viewable angle is greater than enemy manager dot minimum angle, minimum detection angle. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say uh, and and enemy manager dot viewable angle is less than enemy manager dot maximum detection angle. Then you know we're in a place where we could be detected. We're in front of the enemy. And then we're going to say enemy manager dot current target equals player manager. 
that's giving me an error, so let's hover over that. Okay, yes, yeah, so we used we used character stats, not player manager, so we just gotta change that. So we're gonna say character stats, and then we're gonna right click on player manager here, rename, character stats, and then we're gonna change it to transform not get component character stats. Okay, cool. Then we're gonna say is sleeping is equal to false. Enemy animation or animator manager dot play target animation. And we're gonna say wake animation and true. And we haven't made a variable for that, so let's do that right now, right below sleep animation. Public string wake animation. And it doesn't be waking and sleeping. You could have your character sitting in a chair and then getting up off of the chair. You know, you could do a, um, a number of things here. I'm just using sleeping because I have the animations. Okay, so let's minimize that and let's make a Hashtag region, handle, state change. Hashtag end region. We're going to say if enemy manager dot current target does not equal null, return pursue target state. Else, return this. Very straightforward. All right, let's save that. That looks good. Now, um, I think we're going to have to do something here. So first, let's go on our enemy, and let's create an empty game object under the enemy states. And I'm going to call that uh, ambush state. I'm just going to move it here above the idle state. You don't have to. I just want to because it makes sense for me that it's the first state. Now I'm going to add a component to it called ambush state. I'm going to drag in pursue target state, and I'm going to... That looks good. I'm going to drag in these two animations I have here for sleeping and waking up. Cool, so now I'm going to go to the enemy and go to the animator here. I'm going to drag in the sleep animation and I'm not going to draw back an arrow to empty. And then on the get up animation, first of all, I'm going to rename that because I don't know why it's driving me insane. Put a space there and make an uppercase on that U. And I'm going to make it branch back to the empty state. There we go. Okay. Looks good, looks good. Now, on the sleep animation, I'm just going to call it sleep, because that's what it's called. And the wake animation, I'm going to call it get up, because that's what it's called. Very straightforward. And we have to do a couple more things. So let's actually go now to the enemy manager and drag in the ambush state on the current state. That way, when I start the game up, that will be the first state. Let's tick is sleeping on the ambush state. And back in here, we actually have to change this to is interacting, you're gonna get an error because it doesn't exist. Uh, on the enemy manager, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna say, do I already have that in the character manager? Let me check. I don't think I do actually. We're gonna say public bull is interacting. And then on the update in the enemy manager, we're actually going to say is interacting is equal to enemy animator handler dot anim dot get bull and then we're going to fill it in with uh, is interacting now I can't remember if he's a capital I or lowercase I think it's a lowercase I'm just going to check real quick so I'll be right back okay yeah it was a lowercase I'm just going to paste it here Okay, now that's gonna basically make our is interacting bull whatever it is on the animator every frame. So um, now, the reason why we're doing this is because if we hadn't, then it would basically try to play this animation every frame. Because if you were sleeping um, and it couldn't pick up the is interacting, it would just keep restarting the animation over and over and over again. And you don't want that, obviously. That would look kind of silly. We're gonna make a public layer, mass detection layer. We're gonna make that public. And then we're gonna just pick the layer in here, which is character. I believe it's the last one. Yep, there it is. And now when we start the game, we should be able to walk in front of our enemy and he will get up and try to attack us. So let's do that right now. Yep, and that works fine. Awesome, he's trying to kill us. That's cool. Okay, excellent. 
Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. On the next video, we're actually gonna go over some of the bugs we have with our AI, such as him running in circles in some instances and just running around the player like a maniac. And we're gonna correct those. We're also gonna go over some previous bugs that may have existed in the series. I think there's a couple from previous episodes I have not fixed. So the next episode will be a bug squishing episode and uh, making everything neat and nice and tidy. Also, we, as of right now, actually just hit our goal on Patreon for two videos a week. So providing we're still in that threshold, uh, come the 1st of January. After January, I will start making two videos a week. So thank you very much for that, guys. I really appreciate it. That's awesome. And uh, thank you for your continued support. As usual, if you made it this far and you're feeling really generous, please drop a like. It does help appease the YouTube algorithm gods. If you're feeling super generous, leave me a comment. That kicks the algorithm in the butt even more. And if you're feeling like a total champion, check out my Patreon below. I will see you guys in the next video, and please enjoy your holidays. Bye!